Hello everyone, my name is Paige. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another episode of Pony Problems with Paige. Um, if you would like to be a part of the next episode, go follow me on Instagram. I'll usually post a photo that looks like this and you guys comment your questions, etc, etc. I suggest turning post notifications on because that way you won't miss it. Um, but anyway, so let's hop right into it. Okay, Carly Sawyer asks, I usually ride this pony who's very energetic and likes to rush off after a jump. Is there any way I could fix or prevent this from happening? Um, okay, I have been riding a horse lately as well who likes to do this. Um, the biggest tip I can kind of give is when you are coming up to the jump, quiet, try and remain quite quiet. Um, I feel like rushing off after a jump can either just be kind of a mental thing or it can be because they... I feel like with a lot of horses, a lot of horses tend to rush off the, off jumps because they're trying to escape a rip in the mouth or they're trying to escape um, someone landing on them quite heavily. So I would recommend just start off by making sure you're holding your mane, making sure you're not ripping them in the mouth um, and making sure that you're not slapping them with your butt in the saddle when you land. Um, that could kind of fix that originally. If that's not the issue and it's just them rushing off after a jump, um, I would recommend when you land, um, try and come to a dead halt um, on the straight line from where you've jumped and keep repeating that exercise and eventually they'll wait for your cue to ask whether they should keep going or whether they should stop. Um, yeah, that's kind of it really. Okay, Life is Horses asks how to get your horse to like a stable. Um, okay, I feel like stabling your horse in the equestrian social media community is quite a controversial thing. My opinion, if I owned a horse, which I don't, but if I did, I would try and let them have as much time as possible in a paddock. Um, obviously where people live can really impact that, and if stabling is the only option that you do have, um, I would try and make sure that you get lots of breaks in between. Um, but then again, I want you to understand too is, if a horse doesn't like a stable, just think about it for a second. If your horse doesn't like a stable, it's because they're inside a box, they can't move, they can't do what they want, they don't have... They can interact with other horses, but it's much harder to do that. They're kind of isolated, and you can understand why a horse wouldn't like a stable. So I think the best way to get your horse to like that stable, get them some sort of mental stimulation, um, whether that be you can get those ball toys, um, whether it be a salt lick, whether it be... Um, to be honest, I'm not really quite sure about the nutrition behind salt licks. Maybe get that checked out first, but um, but yeah, get them some sort of mental stimulation. I think that's a really good thing at first. Um, a few of the horses at the facility where I ride um, have little balls and toys, or they have like people put bottles with like sand and stuff in it, and then they crunch it up, and the horses play with it, and it makes like a crunchy sound. Um, but having some sort of mental stimulation, I think, is really important. I think that if you're going to stable your horse, make sure you put them in a spot within the boarding facility where they are engaging with other horses, um, they can hear other horses, they can see other horses. I think that's very helpful. To like their stable is making it their comfort place, making it somewhere they can go to. Um, try not to harass them in there, try not to spend too much time with them in their stable because it's supposed to be their place where they go to to rest, to rehabilitate, etc. Um, but very important, do lots of paddock interval breaks. So have them in the stable, then send them out to the paddock, then have them in the stable, then send them out to the paddock. Don't leave them in the stable long enough where they feel like it's a chore to be there. Um, but then again, like I said, a lot of horses act very differently. I know some horses who are absolutely fine being in a stable. They don't play up. I know other horses who they're in there for a, maybe a minimum, a maximum of four weeks, and then they go nuts. They will back people off, etc., etc. So. I think it's really important that you give those paddock intervals. DS and me ask, do you have any tips for keeping your heels down and any tips for sitting trot? Thanks. You guys know I uh, follow a YouTuber called Your Riding Success. She's a dressage rider. She posts motivational videos. She posts, she posts a bunch of videos and a lot of them are about sitting trot. To improve your sitting trot, the things that I could say, my sitting trot's not the best, but in theory, this is what I think improves your sitting trot. Um, I think doing a lot of it with no stirrups is really helpful because you learn how to center yourself without the help of your stirrups. Um, I think it's very important too that you don't try and grip with your knees. When you grip with your knees it kind of turns everything inwards and you pop out of the saddle. So I think it's really important not to do that. Um, also as well another tip, I used to do this but try not to 
perch everything backwards and kind of sit on like the squishy part of your bum because I feel like that's a cheat. It makes it feel much easier. It doesn't look pretty other. So I feel don't do that. Try and stay dead central and don't kind of, I think it's very important in sitting trot not to counteract and push your body back as a way of staying balanced because then your mining with the horse disappears and that impacts your horse's balance as well. I'm not the best at sitting trot so I'll leave a few videos and things you might want to go check out down below. Um, she has some great exercises to help you with sitting trot and yeah. Are using stirrups which obviously most of the time you will be. Um, try and think with sitting trot every time stamping your foot down. So every stride think stamp, 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 stamp and that will hopefully kind of keep your heels down at the same time but keep you kind of weighted to the floor. Practice doing little bits of it and going like two steps forward, one steps back. Do a little bit of sitting trot, come back to rise, come back to walk. Do a bit more sitting trot, come back to walk. Do a bit more sitting trot, come back to walk. I think two steps forward, one step back is a really good approach to fixing your sitting trot. I think that keeping your heels down, there's not really any exercises for it. I don't think so. If you know of any, leave them down below. Um, I think it's more of a mental thing that you've got to keep saying yourself, my heels need to be down, my heels need to be down, my heels need to be down, my heels need to be down. Ellie Spalding asks, how to make a horse bend more and stretch? Um, I'm not sure if this applies to every horse, but I've been riding a horse lately who is a little bit hard to bend, he's a little bit hard to stretch out, and my whole thing I've kind of been doing, um, I'm trying to show him the easy way and the hard way that it can be if you know what I mean. Um, so I will start off the ride. This is what I did a few weeks ago. Or maybe not a few weeks ago. I think I did this on Thursday. But um, I didn't film it. But what I tried to do is I tried to do lots of collection at the beginning. No stretch. I just tried to... Obviously I warmed up first, but then I tried to do the collection. So I tried to shorten his stride, compact everything, sitting trot. Um, I tried to bring everything from about here, like his whole body, to like compact it and put it together. Um, this is in regards to the stretch, by the way. Um, so I tried to compa compact everything. I tried to get really short little strides. And then what I did is I slowly went back to rising trot, lengthened my stride, sh length, uh, lengthened my reins, and he slowly took the stretch. Because he had experienced, I'm not saying the collection is uncomfortable, I'm just saying, because he had experienced quite a bit of a tight workout and quite a... Um, I don't know what the word is, but quite a tight workout. He took that stretch and was like, oh, it's a stretch, and he really went into it. He really put effort into the stretch, if you know what I mean. So that's kind of something I feel that you could do. Doing that kind of collection is, and that tight workout, then putting the stretch at the end is great because that also gives you a really good training opportunity because once they do stretch, that's a really great way, a really great opportunity to use positive reinforcement. So kind of, that's a way to get the stretch, but then you can build on it from there. As to bending, I typically, when I'm bending, I like to think of my inside leg hugging the horse, and I like to think of everything bending this way. Um, I think it's really important with bend, something I've only picked up on in the past few months, is when you bend, it's very easy for the outside shoulder of the horse to fall out. So for that, I like to kind of keep my outside leg on as well and my outside rein very still and kind of closing in that shoulder. Another exercise as well I think is really good to do bend with is if you do a lot of serpentines and you do a lot of figures of eight, lots of changing direction to kind of supple the body and get a bit of bend. Um, last question, Kirsty asks, how can you build a great bond or relationship with your new horse? Obviously, like I've said 50 million times, I don't own a horse, but when I ride, I'm going to be riding a horse for a while. Um, there are a few things I like to do. I will start off by doing a join up in the lunge yard. Um, I actually will pop up a card right now and I have a whole video talking about how I do my join up. I think that doing a lot of groundwork is really important. Starting those foundations from the ground before you get riding is kind of great. I think bonding as well, you need to consider you as Okay, as much as we like to think this, in my opinion, horses want leaders. Horses want someone they can turn to, they want someone they can follow, they want someone who's confident, someone who knows where they're going and someone who's going to keep them safe. For the leader, you do, the horse does what you tell them to, you will keep them safe. Kind of have that approach as well. Um, like I said as well, I will leave videos down below. There is a guy called Warwick Schiller. He is great at that sort of stuff. He has some great educational videos on there and he is a horse trainer. So I'll leave a few videos about this down below, but I think it's very important to kind of come with the approach that you are the new horse's leader, 
that doesn't mean you overpower them. That doesn't mean that they do... He's, that doesn't mean you're on top, he's on bottom. It just means that you're a leader, you're going to keep him safe and you kind of have to come with that approach rather than, oh, here's carrots, here's carrots, here's apples. Oh, you like me? I hope you like me. Um, but yeah, like think about how horses would act in herds. They have a leader that keeps them safe and then they create a bond with that horse. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you'd like to be a part of the next episode. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.